Rogers, man. Robert Rogers is definitely in the building, and he's at the back right now. What's going on, man? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing tonight? I'm all right, man. Hey, like, as, as I was saying before I um, did a little intro, thank you again for saying yes. A lot of people don't say yes. I, I told you that over the phone, right? But I meant that because not a lot of people just say yes. You know what I'm saying? And so, and, and come in and be a part of this journey that I'm on. Doing this show with this radio, so uh, shout out, shout out to you for coming for real, man. And so, um, so yeah, let's tell people who you are, man. You know, get the ball rolling. All right, so um, again, I thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely, um, I take all, every any opportunity to to, uh, to share what I, I offer to, to the world, if you will. Yes, so, sir. I'm Robert Rogers. I am the owner and CEO of Our Excellence Management. And so we are a uh, LLC that embodies any type of thing that you could think of. Mm -hmm. The first um, portion of that is event management. So we manage any kind of event that you can have. Um, we also run, uh, we have a hairline. So we have hair extensions for the ladies, wigs, weaves, all that they need. I have a, mm -hmm. a hairline. Yeah. Absolutely, it's called Our <laughs> Excellence Extensions. Yeah. And so, um, it's tax time, ladies, so make sure y'all hit me Did up. you hear that? <laughs> hey, you pulled a Beyonce move with them. Come on, it's tax time. Yeah, she put them three thousand dollar tickets from, it's during tax season. Yeah. She knows what she nah, I don't need three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I need it, but I ain't gonna charge yeah, you three thousand. Right. But right. yeah, it's tax time, so hit me up for them wigs and that 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 <laughs> yeah. um, And yeah, so we do that. Um, we can. We pretty much can do a one-stop shop. We can do anything and offer you anything that you need to um, have you, your production or your event or make you personally. We offer offer wardrobe style and all of those things. Hey, you oh. just hey, you snapping? <laughs> I just got on. You snapping? Man, on you know, uh, a on. jack of all trades. There's a, there's a definition of Robert Rogers. You know what I'm saying? If you look him up in the Wikipedia, what's that? Google Wikipedia. You'll find that definition. So let's get down to your childhood, man. Where did this all start? Like, I'm talking about the four year old that they walk around with boo pampers and stuff like that. Where did where did oh, all this start? Like? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, childhood, man. I you know I was blessed to have a, 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 a what I would consider a normal childhood, right? Yeah. You know, um, which off off absolutely comes with challenges. Okay. And so what we don't realize is that. Um, Life does not, or God does not tell you which which challenge you'll face during the course of life. But my particular challenge was not growing up with both parents in the house. Oh, wow. okay. And so I was blessed to be raised by my grandparents, which still gave me a family unit. Yeah. Um, but that started the steering and direction of how I became who I became today. Um, so I, 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 for me, childhood was good. I don't have any complaints. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything because it created me to be who I am today. From the west side or south side? From the west side, absolutely. Are oh, you from the west side? Absolutely. Okay, you too mighty. You too mighty. Definitely. Oh, oh man, say that. You know. Hey, for real. Um, so, um, why high school did you go to on the west side? Did not go to high school on the west side. I went to a uh, grade school on the west side okay. and then transferred to the suburbs. Okay, uh, so you, uh, what, Chicago Heights? Uh, no, Maywood. Maywood? Oh, you Still too nice. That's out west. <laughs> That's out west, man. Maywood is definitely yeah, out west. Man. So, uh, what you, what the profiles of west? Yeah, east? East. East? Okay, cool, man. That rivalry, I, I know, I know it's, it's crazy over there, man, but. So you are a, wait, is that a panther or a pirate? Which one is that? It's a pirate. A pirate, okay, cool. So, uh, so you, you do parties, right? I mean, you play in the events for them, so. If a person like <coughs> y'all do stuff like if I needed you to set the mood for if I wanna have some for my lady and I need y'all to boom come, you know what I'm saying, make the room look out for what the ladies Absolutely. Want. So for Valentine's Day we offer packages like that where if you wanna do it in your house or you rent a room, yeah. we will flip that area. We'll give you a, a dinner cuisine for two, five course meal, three course meals, whichever course you choose. We'll cool flip scene. I yeah. never heard that word. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll flip the room, bring in tablescapes, 
you name it, rose petals, flowers, candles. We've re literally set that mood. We have some examples online of birthday gatherings. Some people even done it for their mates for their birthday. They'll rent a room or a suite and we go fill the suite and then you bring them in. They think you're just going to a regular hotel room and they walk in and it's literally, it's like a pair of, you know, paradise a getaway. What's your what's your website? I don't know. My website is our excellence dot biz. That's our excellence dot biz. Once again, that's our excellence dot dot biz. Oh, so how was it? How was it? Um, as far as like growing up as as a black man on the west side of Chicago, um, were you the one that you know just had a group of friends that you hung around with, or was it just you? You know, the person you by, just by yourself all the time. Like, who who were you in your teenage, you know, younger man years? So, I didn't even put your age. I like to <laughs> <laughs> good, good. So actually, um, funny thing. Funny thing is, I'm. I, I want to say maybe fifty fifty. I'm fifty fifty a loner, okay, and fifty fifty uh, a people person, if you will. Yeah. Um, I enjoy having the company of myself like i can legit watch them like binge watch hulu netflix all those things and be absolutely fine um in my own space doing my own thing or what have you and then on the flip side that other 50 percent, i love people um i've always been one that people draw to mm -hmm. um, even even at younger than i am now um, I've always been one. I've always been a leader, right? Okay. So people draw to me for advice. People draw to me for uh, opinions and things of that nature. So that's kind of how I also became who I am because I was always the one that was yeah. leading the pack, as opposed to just being a part of the pack. I like the way you put that. So, and and that being said, let's go into one of our um, topics that I want to speak with you about. Um, as far as growing up, like being the, which is which, what we call it is poem, um, the product of, of my environment. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? P O M E. So I, I, I wanted, I wanted to get your intake on how do you feel about? Um, do do you necessarily believe that whatever you're around really gonna affect you, like growing up, or is it up to you to, you know? I know not as a kid because you you live with, with your mom and stuff like that, but um, like when you're Teenage adult life, do you feel like being in a certain environment or a certain lifestyle will help you? Not just help you, will, will determine your, you know, the way you growing up and stuff like that. So my belief might be a little different than others. I absolutely believe that your environment or how you or what's around you will affect you, right? Mm -hmm. um, however. So ultimately, the answer is yes. I believe that it can absolutely steer your direction and affect you. Yes, sir. But there's a, there's a way out of it because you can choose to follow those paths. You mm -hmm. can choose to stay in those places, or you can choose in the event that, that that it's not the environment that you want. You can choose to adjust your life and be the one or the ones that don't succumb to that environment. For example. Um, Growing up on the west side of Chicago, my family was not rich. You know, we weren't we weren't poor, but we weren't rich, right? So there there's obviously gang violence. There's obviously you know uh, all types of things that could be an influence. Um, some cousins of mine chose to fall in that way and, yeah. and and follow that influence, and then some of us didn't. So and not to say who's better than who, but it's just the choices that we've made. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I've I've learned now to do is to really and I I, I I I teach and preach this everywhere I go, telling people that your choices don't just affect you. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately the choices that you we make affect those that are connected to us in any capacity. So you have to choose not to be a product of the environment. You can use that environment as a stepping stone to go to where you want to go and create your own environment. And so that's what I've done. I had some issues um, because, yeah, I grew up again. I grew up raised by my grandparents. My parents, they divorced and separated. So someone would say that they could use that energy to become um I don't want to say a horrible person because yeah. we don't want to call people horrible, right? Mm -hmm. But they could use that energy in a negative way and use it as a crutch, mm -hmm. if you will, to say, 
oh, because I didn't have my mom and dad in the house, I had to do this. I had to result to a life of hustling or southern drugs yeah. or whatever that might be, right? And that could have been my choice. Mm -hmm. But my choice was, no, I'm what I'm going to do is use the, the, the energy from that and push myself to be the best person that I can be. And that's how it started. Hey, I like the way you put that, man. Hey, you've been dropping mm -hmm. great answers. You just started dropping gems at the beginning of the show, man. We just got started. Like, hey, well, that was a great answer. <laughs> he just broke it down and everything. Yeah, that was a great answer. You know I couldn't even say so. I'm like, he right. You know what? Is it? I'm both him for mayor since we both for mayor. Robert Rogers for mayor. For real, Robert Rogers for mayor. And I'm on the campaign team. You know what I'm saying? That's what people do. For sure, do. for sure. Yeah, We're on the campaign team. We're definitely pushing that positive. Exactly, exactly. So. When y'all go to uh, vote this weekend, either don't vote for my uh, nobody else. Robert yeah. Rogers, write him in like the, they, they do on the president's Wait, Can you do that? Oh, and lay off on the ballot. Write him in, Robert Rogers. R O B. Ever since I knew Rob, Rob, what was that? Rob Lagoya, Rob Lagoya. Ever since I knew he was scamming our ass, and I knew, and we all there back then. I ain't hey, going for no more. You know, people times that's all I know. This is how you my school, man. Oh, this shit weird. Hey, man. <laughs> man. Yeah, man. Hey, so let's get back to you know Robert, the person, um, the passion, the drive, the I'm about to go get it. Take us through it. Where you get it from? The 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 makeup of a person that has the that has developed the go get it mentality mm -hmm. um, comes from lack. It comes from what we could consider suffering to a degree. Yeah. Uh, suffering can be considered many things, right? Um, so the go get it, and, and, and I'll even go further to say the bulldog mentality okay, like um, comes from Hashtag. what a person is, right? <laughs> um, and the passion behind it comes from, as we talked about your environment, it comes from, I want to get out of this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, now, it, again, we're back to, everything revolves back to choices. It's your choice to decide which way you choose to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Some of us choose the, the life of crime and, and, and drug and hustling and all those types of thing, things, and that's their get out of it way, right? Yeah. But for me, my way was, I'm going to use everything inside me to get out of what I'm in. And that is pulling all of those gifts and talents and things that we all have because we all have them. Sometimes we just haven't tapped into them to know what they are. Yeah. Um, but we all have them. And so uh, my go get it and my drive was what do I have or possess in me mm -hmm. to become what I need to push me? Um, I was in prayer for someone last week and the Lord told me to tell them that they that individual were their biggest jackpot and their biggest bankruptcy. And <laughs> the, what that means is we have the power to be the jackpot for ourselves yeah. or to be our bankruptcy. And so it's up to you to decide if you're going to end up bankrupt at the end of the choices that you made to push yourself to where you want to go. I'm speechless, y'all, because I don't know whether to open my Bible or take notes or open your Bible to Acts chapter seven. That's just you know what I'm saying, right there, you know. Uh, I don't know the Bible like that, but Acts chapter seven, <laughs> verse such and such. For real, man, like you know, man, you just don't hit it close with that loss. <laughs> but no, man, since we since you just. Drop them gems and made sense like that. Let's get into your your ministry side. Um, I, you just spoke on it. Well, a lot of people that's watching or tuning in don't know that you are a minister as well. And so let's let's get into that. The Robert, the minister, or you know, Minister Rogers or Elder Rogers. What what is your title? And then um, also tell me, you know, whether it all started and how did you get that that calling? Oh wow. Um, well. It started, oh gosh, as a little boy. Um, I never, I never, so you said the title. So my official title is um, 
Elder Robert Rogers and uh, this is my new pastor, y'all. <laughs> for Popping Up Podcast, Pastor Robert Rogers is the pastor of Popping Up Podcast. Oh, so wow. make sure y'all send y'all offers to what? Oh, <laughs> 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 cash out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, hey, we collect ties around here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ten, five percent. We ain't gonna take ten percent like Jesus. Yeah, but, we, we not. Yeah, we're not gonna mess with what God needs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm kind of a jokester. I grew up in church too, but I play all day. So, um, yeah, no, good. Good. <laughs> but, so um, yeah. So I am uh, associate pastor at my home church, uh-huh. and that is uh, Powerhouse International. Shout Ministries. out to them. Hey, shout I'm, out to my church. I love y'all, man. Y'all make me shout every Sunday night. <laughs> I'll be on the couch, but y'all make me shout every yeah, night. Yeah, absolutely. You look, look. Shout out your shout out on your couch yeah. shout out the church whatever but yep so um, I'm associate pastor at Powerhouse International Ministries uh, 8908 South Ashland Avenue in I Chicago, told you he's my pastor I told you where <laughs> my pastor is prophet and overseer Antonio D. Rockamore shout out to him out to he Rock. might be listening I don't know he might see it on the lab I don't know but shout out to Rock that's where <laughs> so that's where I, I currently worship um, it all started though um, long ago at um, the late Bishop Willie James under the late Bishop Willie James Campbell and that's, and that's the St. James Church yeah, of God in Christ yeah. that's where I was born that's the first church I ever went to um, and then I also have to add this little tidbit in there too uh, being in the transition of two homes mm-hmm. um, with mother on one side father on another side I also was able to get some spiritual guidance and some impartation from uh, the late uh Pastor Lila Hicks and okay. the uh, he's not the late the Lord Lord Jesus and Bishop James Hicks who's currently the pastor uh, Pastor for, Killer folks y'all I'm so, I didn't mean it I should have said his name first I, <laughs> so uh, Bishop James you know what I'm saying the late Pastor Lila Hicks also were were very 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 instrumental in impartation um, spiritually for me as well so those are my uh, my leaders and so growing up. I just was just a church a church kid. That's yeah. all. I didn't desire to do nothing. I didn't desire none of this, right? I was just a church kid. I sang in the choir, right? you know. Just you know, yeah. we play shot it because we marked the adults. And, yeah, thanks. You know all that stuff. So I didn't want any of this that is currently here today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do know that it was a calling. I do know that it was it was what was spoken over my life um, all the time, right? Mm-hmm. And. Um, Honestly speaking, I did not want to answer that call. So you asked about knowing. Uh, I've always known it was there, but if we if, if, here we go with your biblical reference. If we, <laughs> if we go to the Bible, Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus did not want the calling that was before him. Come on, huh? And so anybody that wants a title or wants a calling, I'm afraid of you. You you're you're not truly called to it because anybody that's called to it they absolutely do not want it Jesus said in that garden when he prayed three times to to the father said Lord let this bitter cup pass me by Mm -hmm. that was because he didn't want the assignment people that are truly assigned do not want it and the doors of the church were old you may come by another Christian experience (laughs) candidate for baptism yeah I I, I grew up in a Baptist so that's how we uh, open up the doors of the church I see (laughs) I grew up in the Church of God in Christ, so I don't know about that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we open up the Hey, so, let me get your opinion. You're the minister. I, I, I'll be ministering other ways. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, everybody got a ministry now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But you're my pastor for now. So, um, give, me my, give me the take, and then if you got to rebuke me, you can. You know, I know all about the rebuke and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. <laughs> but give, give me your take on... Um, Give me your take on uh, getting baptized uh, again. Do you feel like Do you feel like um, it's okay to get dipped one more time? You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I mean, I to get dipped as many times as you want, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, um, the 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 scripture talks about being baptized, right? But okay. it didn't say how many times you had to or to do it. So yeah. it's according to your faith and what you believe. If you think that. Um, I was baptized as a young boy, but I have been baptized as an adult. However, I don't think it's out of 
out of the question, right? Yeah. It's according to your faith and what you want to do to renew your level of belief in, in that process. Mm -hmm. So I think that people should make the choice if they want if they got baptized as a kid and they felt like it wore off, right? <laughs> Some people say that it wore off. <laughs> um, they get baptized again. So I think it is absolutely uh, symbolic of what we need to do. Yeah, because I feel like well, it ain't wore off, but uh, <laughs> it did wear off. And I just want to make sure, ain't, you know, I can scratch out all my other sins. Because I got about 97 sins I committed <laughs> since okay. the last baptism. Oh, wow. And so I'm, work, I'm working on 98, but uh, yeah, well, he, he's still working on me. Yeah, that, that'll dip you again. So yeah, you wash you know off, wash off. You put me in the water. You my pastor. I told you that. You the pastor of Popping Up Podcast. <laughs> I don't know why you playing, but go ahead. Take, I gave you the time. Yes, I did. Just you take it to the water. Yeah, you know, just dip me, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just don't drown me, though, okay? You yeah. know, no, 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 no. I'm scared of water a little bit. I, I, I can swim. A extra. <laughs> yeah, you like you going to trip me just so I can go down faster. <laughs> yeah. But no, man. Uh, so let's talk. Let's go back to Robert Rogers, the, the man. Um... What do you see yourself in five years from now? <clears throat> I, I would really like to see my company as a Fortune 500 company, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see, um, I would like to see myself um, uh, as a property owner. I okay. want to own property and have investments. You know, we don't just. I don't at this stage in life, and at this point in life, I've learned that money is not necessarily just be made, just made to be spent. You know, we mm -hmm. want to wear, we want to wear every dollar we get. Yeah. We want to, every dollar we get got to go on our shoes, our feet, or our back. And so I learned that um, what I wanted to create is wealth and uh, make sure that I'm, I'm okay. So in five years, I want to own properties. I want to actually own event spaces. So that, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for growth in business. Growth in business. Um, make sure you put that on the t-shirt and sell it on your website. I'm gonna buy one from you too, okay? Gotcha. So, <laughs> cause um, yeah, I I like the way you're going with this. So um, let's let's um talk about the the family man. Do you are you got any kids? Do you got any special someone in your life? You ain't got a name them, but you know what I'm saying? Cause you might be tipping and dipping. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, y'all. Hey, Pastor Rock, I'm just playing on him. Please, please forgive me in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> please re don't rebuke me tonight. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Cause I got a grandma that will, and she li probably listening like, you know, I talk to you better than this. <laughs> but for real, pa pa Pastor uh, Rock, man, please don't rebuke me. I'm just playing with him. But this is what I do over here, man. So I hope y'all accept me. I'm pretty sure you do, cause uh, y'all, y'all, you upstanding already because you answered and said yes. So uh, you upstanding. But um, the kids. So I do not have biological children, but I do have several godchildren, and I like godchildren because you can give them back to their parents. Yeah, you know, right? I always drop them off. Absolutely, you don't spend enough of my money. You yeah. don't paid enough of my food. Let me drop you off to your mama. Sometimes I go pick For them up sure. too. Yeah, I'm talking about go pick them up. Like go in the house, pick them up, put them back down. You see, uh, that's the kind of thing y'all have. They never go out with you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I will come pick you up. That's what I'm saying. Eight years old, he's here for to pick them up. Right. <laughs> hey, when he's twelve, I'm going over there. Pick him up put him, until he get heavy. Now, if he a three hundred pound kid, I ain't gonna be able to do it. Yeah, just take yeah. him up. Yeah. 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 But no, yeah. no biological, <laughs> no biological <laughs> children. Uh, not married, so no, not it's not that time's not yet. I want to make sure that I am uh, who I want to be first before I interject that into somebody else's life. Okay, okay. So I kind of, I kind of like the way you put that because you know, I, I ain't, I ain't seeing nobody right now either. But when it um, comes comes to dating, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't I ain't date nobody. You know what I'm saying? Uh, at least I don't know that. <laughs> they, might, they might be dating you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> at least I don't know that. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's get back to you, though, Raj, man. How, how um, what's your next step in 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 in, in uh, becoming the, the the great businessman that you want to be? Um. I'll, always looking for ways to better my business, right? There's mm -hmm. somebody out there that's been doing this longer than me. There's somebody yeah. out there that has better insight than me. So just trying to make that connection so that I can then learn how to further mold and shape my business to get to where I want it to be. Again, 
to get to where those Fortune 500 companies are, I have to figure out what strategies and tools and path they use to get there. Yeah. So that's what that's what I'm looking and striving towards. And so, um, when it comes to that, how, how how do you feel about collaborating with others? Is that something that you don't mind doing, or would you just rather take care of you first as a business, or as an entrepreneur, or as a a person or you don't mind collaborating with another business with another label stuff like that definitely not see there's their strength in numbers right mm -hmm. um collaborating with someone else will number one teach you new things yeah right the, what you do to for example today we're collaborating yeah your business has taught me i've never done radio right yeah you know so it's officially today i've been on the radio yeah. i've done radio right yeah. you know <laughs> but um Yes, you, 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 everybody needs somebody. You can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. um, so partnering with people absolutely opens doors that you might not be able to, that you don't have the key to, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to get in these places, you need to be connected to those that have the keys to those doors mm -hmm. and vice versa. I have keys to doors that someone else may need to get through. And so how can we can how can we get to those places without connecting with people? So you mm -hmm. can't any any entrepreneur or business that's solely working alone is not in business. Yeah, cuz even <laughs> you, I mean you need somebody cuz you need customers. Yeah, you, you need clients. Yeah. So there's 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 no way around connecting or you you're not in business. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. It's definitely about partnerships and connections. Okay. So how how as a person, do you balance business? Do you balance ministry? Do you balance the person? The person you you as a as a man? How do you balance all that in one? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea. I, you supposed to say by the grace? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's God. It is God. It yeah, is, because it. it is God. Because to me, there probably at this point there is no balance. They all run together like it's one big pot of soup to me. I don't even know. Um, I just take, I, I literally balance everything, literally, this is going to probably, this, there, I don't have a great deep answer for this one, yeah. um, so, the, like you said, I was dropping gems, this is not a gem at all, yeah. it's, 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 <laughs> I literally balance all of the things by a calendar. <laughs> literally if it's not written on my calendar it's probably not even in my head anymore so that's how I balance yeah. everything from business to church to me to yeah. family it's on a calendar it's the blood the blood the blood that never lose it's <laughs> <laughs> hey I'm telling y'all hey I grew up in the church man y'all might not see me that every Sunday but y'all see me on uh, I go to YouTube Baptist and, and my pastor is Robert Rogers. <laughs> a lot of people go to YouTube Baptist. Yeah, you know, um, that's actually was my church home before church homes was invented. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. Uh, tell me about the life of. Let's go back to you know ministry, ministry a little bit. Let, tell me about the life of a of a, of a minister um, in in your in your viewpoint. Um, <clears throat> the life of a minister, from my view, and now this might not be your biblically sound answer. So those that are biblically astute, uh, just forgive me, because I, I, my my leader teaches me to just be real, right? Mm -hmm. He does give us Bible base. He does walk us through the Word, but mm -hmm. we're very real with things like this. And so for me, um, it's becoming the best person I can be in the space that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, trying to do what's right and make the best decisions for the best results and then trying to assist others to get there as well whatever that assistance looks like i feel <laughs> i'm gonna come back to that comment i had a i had a comment to one of what you just said but i don't want to uh miss miss ask you the question but um i do i do want to um touch bases on you and your creative mindset when it comes to our excellence. Okay. Let's speak on it. Let's speak on when when it's time to create. Do you have a ritual? Are you in there? You know, jotting down paper. Do you have somebody that you call and help you figure this stuff out? You know what I'm saying? Um, who? Like, take us through the process. So, each process is different. That's okay. first. Um, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the individual. 
Yeah. Um, then I'm working with the client, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I have to draw from them what I feel they represent, uh, how, how I feel I can represent them yeah. in their in their space. Um, it depends on where the event is, right? I have mm-hmm. the, the the location, the venue has to give me a certain vibe, um, and then I go to it prior to the event to just look at it, to lay my eyes on it. And then I put those all those pieces together, and it creates what I do. Yeah. Um, sometimes, literally, I don't even know what I'm doing until I'm doing it. So that creativeness, <laughs> <laughs> that creativeness kicks in. Hands on, yeah, right? Absolutely, <laughs> it kicks on. It kicks in in the process of creating, yeah. and um, that's how it works. So it's 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 a compilation of everything. It's it's who I'm servicing. It's where the, where the service is going to be held, and me just trying to embody that person and what I think their event or what I think that their um, space should give them for the event that they're throwing. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, did you, um, you know, go to school for this type of stuff? When you did you go to you know college for designing and crafts and like what was your pur- purpose before all of this? Or was this it? No, this happened by mistake. My my schooling and education field is psychology. Mm-hmm. So that one has nothing to do with the yeah. other, technically. Um, but I have found that in these, in events, I'm still counseling people. Because yeah. these clients talk to me about everything mm-hmm. uh, as we're learning each, each other through the process. Okay. So they kind of work hand in hand that I found out. But um, this happened by mistake. My sister was getting married. And I had no idea about anything about a wedding or whatever. And so she was getting married, but the person that was helping her flaked on her. They canceled. Wow. Okay. And she was just going crazy. You know how women can be about their weddings. So she's going nuts. Yeah. And I was just like, calm down. It's not hard. It's, doing a wedding is easy. We can figure that out. Mm-hmm. I literally just went on YouTube and started watching a bunch of weddings and wedding shows and just whatever was on there (laughs) and figured out how to put her event together Mm -hmm. and we went and put her event together and from that moment that day i like oh i could flip a room and it looks like one way when we walk in there and then after i get done it's another way Mm -hmm. and it looks great and grand and all that good stuff and from that point on i started doing events (laughs) so it was by mistake (laughs) so honestly this is like kind of like one of your ministries too, right? Absolutely. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's not always in the building, and let's let, let's get to that. How do you feel about the the ins and out of of the church building as far as ministry? Um, do you are you want are you like um, a fan of both, or would you rather do one or the other? Like, what's your take on it? So I'm a fan of both. I believe you need both. Um, however, everybody will never be in both or mm-hmm. attend both. You, there are people that probably probably will never step foot in an actual church, mm-hmm. but that's where the outside ministry takes on, and I should become the church for them. I should bring the church yeah. to them, right? Be the temple, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, um, I love the church indoors. Obviously, I was raised in church. I'm 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 used to it. It's a part of me, you know. It, it, that's just that. So yes, I love being in church in the building, but I'm also okay with understanding that I have to be the church and so with me having to be the church I since I am the church I can bring church to wherever I am so if someone does not uh, know Christ or or they're not a church goer or they don't really whatever I can create whatever atmosphere I need to help them I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to put them to the test Jordan look since we at church and you my pastor right now I'm gonna put you to the test oh goodness I hate tests. I'm, I have very bad tests. I only know testing anxiety. <laughs> I only know Genesis to Exodus. So go ahead, and give me six, the whole six, six books. Yeah, not gonna in order. <laughs> <laughs> Let me open my my Bible app <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know what I'm saying. I had to throw it out there because you know on Easter, I used to hate that y'all. Like I, I don't quote sixty six books. Man, I can't even quote seven. You talking about sixty six? You know what I'm saying? Genesis, how they go? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, number Deuteronomy, Joshua, Genesis, Ruth, 1st, 2nd, Samuel, 
My Wi-Fi not working, so I can't. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> help me, Jesus, help me. Hey, I tried to do it. You know what was that twelve I just did? You know, I said I be stopping at seven to twelve. Okay. Twenty seven to twelve, I stop. That's a good count too. You know what I'm saying? When I'm uh, drinking that communion juice, I might get cool all 66 of them. You know what I'm saying? The communion juice, y'all, is the true wine. So shout out to my true wine. Um, I'm going to give him something to take home because, you know, he's the man of God. He's my pastor. So I can have my pastor, you know, on the ride right now. But he definitely going to get something to take home, and I hope he enjoys it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you need something right before you go up and preach, you you know you can take a little sip right before you go up there and say, "Yeah, Lord," you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have to throw that in there because you know when I'm in church, that's what I do. I say, "Yeah, Lord." Uh oh. Th those are one of my uh, Amen corner moments. <laughs> so yeah, if you ever need me to come be your Amen, be expecting to hit that "Yeah, Lord" part. Okay. I got you. <laughs> I like that. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I can say "Yeah, Lord." I can say "Won't He Will." You okay. Feel me? I can do all that. Both so, of those work. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna shout because I'm counting my feet. More he will. <laughs> I ain't gonna shout because my feet. I don't, I don't know. I, my court not coordinated. Yeah, you know. I understand. Everybody can't do that. Yeah, you know. I ain't got time for all that. So I just let y'all do it. And you, you shout fast. What? You know what I'm saying? You be. I, I be watching y'all on YouTube, and when I see you up there, you be like, you be going fast. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> how can you do that? You been practicing. <laughs> Most people do. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I should practice. I ain't, I ain't never thought of that. You know what I'm saying? But um, let's get into your fears. Fears as 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 you know your next journey, your next move your next step um well first of all we 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 do know that fear is is an enemy to faith and so i try to conquer fear um mm -hmm. I, if i had to label a fear i would dare say that the thing that i would fear the most would be failure uh, no one wants to fail no one wants to um look back and say that they didn't accomplish something right yeah so if i had to label fear but i don't fear I, I i try to follow what the scripture says and so because the lord is my light i don't have to fear anything oh. um but because we um have to label things sometimes to know what to get rid of uh -huh. um if i had to label it it would be failure i would fear failure because i don't want to fail well he made me not want to fear no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to fear. The scripture yeah. told us that. Yeah, you don't have to fear. Fear not. Is that, is that the scripture? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I made it up on my way in. <laughs> You'll catch it on, on your way home. On your way home. And do what y'all be saying. That's what he said. You say that. <laughs> hey, I love church though, man. I have fun at church. I don't care what I do. I have, and, and that's why I like. I, I like when y'all be having fun at church, man. Y'all pass the cool. He be doing this thing up there. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I love him. Y'all band code. Y'all praise team. Shout out to y'all praise team. Y'all praise team. Dope. You on the praise team. I be seeing you up there uh, with your 80K on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 80K and Junior and stuff. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, let me stop playing so much. Uh, but no, man. And when you going to invite me to church? And I, I'll be your guest. I'll be rock guest. I'll be the whole powerhouse guest. Man, I actually want to stream one of y'all service one night. Y'all let me, man. Is that okay? Uh, I don't see why it'd be a problem. I'll definitely talk to him and see what he thinks about it. I'm Ooh, sure it'd be good. I'll and, definitely and you're welcome service. anytime. Come, come. We look. We just we're we're just remodeling our sanctuary, okay. so we have more space now. And so you can come by Sunday, the first Sunday in March. The first Sunday. Oh, communion Sunday. Sunday. I, love, I, love, Sunday. I love them Sundays. Come get your communion. I know it was the blood. Oh yeah. <laughs> you feel me? That's how I be saying it. Oh yeah. Come get you some communion. <laughs> but hey, look, y'all had a wine or the, or the Welch? Welch. Welch, okay, yeah. all right. I, maybe I'll bring my own Welch. <laughs> my, my own <laughs> wine in the parking lot. So when I do community, I'll just go out there and take your crack out. Yeah, this is for his blood that shed on Calvin. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to try out for ministry, so <laughs> let me know if I'm <laughs> doing it. Start with the blood. Yeah, hey, don't get me started. They don't take much for me. <laughs> That's another thing y'all be saying too. I told y'all I grew up in church, man. I'm just having fun over here, man. I hope I hope you enjoy yourself for real. Man. Absolutely, I am. Um, <laughs> it's one of those episodes where I don't know what I'm gonna say. I don't know what I'm gonna say, but um, <clears throat> let's switch completely. And I know if you don't want to talk about it, we can move on. But um, I did I did a couple of my own research on you. I know you had um, recently. I don't know if it's recently or last year. Lost your mom. 
And so, uh, if, if, if it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I know, because that's such a subject, subject with my mom. But I had a few of my friends and loved ones that lost their mom. And I want to I want to really, like, hear, hear your point and your view and your process of that, of losing a parent. And not only that, losing the one that had you for nine months and you, when you was eight pounds, 33 ounces. Is that how you do it? Eight, eight, pounds, eight pounds, 33 ounces. You know, tell the people, like, what, what went through your head when mama ain't here no more? <laughs> Man, um, <laughs> whew, I, um, I'll say this, it's a, it's a pain that I don't wish on the devil himself. Um, I like that. It's not, it's not an easy thing. It, it, it never gets better. It just gets tolerable. Um, you wow. know, how, how can wow. you... How can you learn to live? I, I, the first thing I thought about, obviously my mom died last year. Okay. And I was, at the time, 39. And so um, I said to someone, I don't know how to live without somebody that I've had for 39 years. To me, you would think it would take another 39 years mm -hmm. to learn how to live without them. Yeah. And it's just been a year. And it has been a difficult task yeah. because me and my mother were very close. Um, and not that anybody is <clears throat> any less close to their moms, but we were transparently close. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't find that a lot these days for whatever reasons. And so... It is not an easy process, but literally it is nobody, and I mean like nobody but God, yeah. that has gotten me through it. There are there are days, and I'm sure anybody else that's lost a mother or a parent can vouch, uh, there are days when you don't want to exist anymore because you're, the hurt, the pain of the loss is just that deep. Um, but the only thing I can do, or the advice I can give to someone in this situation or that literally may be just encountering it. You know, you ask what 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 was my thoughts when I when it happened, you know, like when I realized when she wasn't there. It was what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. You know, I've always had a mom, right? I've always been able to call her when something is going on yeah. and I don't understand or you know, even if I make a mistake or mess up, Mom, what do I do about this? You know? Mm -hmm. Um and, and I will never never dim my mother's light even if, though she's not with me anymore my mother was a perfect example of who to talk to in trouble because she was a recovering addict wow. um, she had a drug addiction for many years mm -hmm. and she was 20 plus years clean um, and so she was studying psychology as well to be a, yeah. to be a counselor and then she was also a advocate at, for those that were in addiction currently wow. so she ran meetings she she did all those things to help pull people out of it like she got out of it mm -hmm. and so um it was devastating for someone that carried so much weight to then be gone yeah, yeah. and realize that they were never coming back like this ain't a trip this ain't a mm -hmm. you know she ain't going to down south for a few minutes she's gone i had to put her physical body in the ground yeah, six feet <laughs> yeah. and 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 so it's still difficult to this very day um mother's day is just ridiculous yeah uh, her birthday is ridiculous holidays period mm -hmm. are just different and ridiculous so the only thing i can say to a person is to just ride the roller coaster um i, I went through a, a season where i had to learn how to deal with my emotions and so the spirit told me to go look on YouTube, we always go to YouTube for everything. I wonder what do we do before YouTube, right? <laughs> but um, I went on YouTube to look at some roller coasters. I didn't know why I was led to do it. I'm like, okay, this is weird, but let's follow it, right? And um, I just watched about maybe 20 different roller coaster videos. Wow. And um, the revelation in that was our emotions and things that we go through and face are like a roller coaster. When you first get on it, you're excited, you, you think you're going to have fun, you're getting into it, but then you get locked and strapped into it. And then once the ride starts moving, you realize that it's not really what you want it to do. But you're, so, but you're strapped down, you're stuck at this point, so you have no choice but to ride it out. And so that's what the message to me was, whatever you're dealing with, just ride it out. Eventually, it does come to a stop and you're able to unstrap 
and be free and get out, get off of it. And so that's how I've learned to manage whatever life presents to me to just ride that roller coaster, ride the wave, let, let the emotions come, deal with them. And at some point I will be able to unstrap myself and walk away from that. Hey y'all, so look, <laughs> as I was listening, y'all know what I came up with? Let me tell y'all what I came up with. Y'all know I ain't got no sense. But as I was listening to my pastor <laughs> preach another one of his sermons, I came up with he I came up with what they do. If I was to have a top a title for this message. Alright. I, I got your title. Can I say it? Go ahead and say it. Since you said roller coaster and all that, the title is of this message is it gets bumpy. See? <laughs> See, that's, that'll work. It that'll preach. Bumpy. You know what I'm that'll saying? Preach. <laughs> so put it on a projector, y'all. Hey, musicians, get ready. I'm about, he about to close. <laughs> For real, man, it gets bumpy. The road gets bumpy. The the life life gets bumpy. Business get bumpy. Relationships get bumpy. I almost closed it for you. <laughs> you close it, not you close it. But no, man. For real though, it gets bumpy, and I feel like um, that's one of the things why I'm glad. Your 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 speaking is 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 you, you can tell you either a minister a speaker uh, some type of evangelist like the way you know how to you know paraphrase and put stuff in perspective and, and I'd be like man he know what he talking about <laughs> and he and not only that he been through some stuff he been through some stuff so when I tell you um, buy that book y'all it's called. It's Gets Bumpy by Robert Rogers. <laughs> he dropping it soon, so I'm speaking that to his exes. I'm, 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 uh, I don't want to say prophesy because I don't want to be Well, you, you all, you all know me. I'm actually writing a book, yeah. so. <laughs> okay. I'm currently writing a book, actually. Look at God. What he do it? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that in there, real. Man, you feel me? Hey, look, baby, baby, I, I'm telling you, I'm putting my resume in rock. Come, uh, I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to pull up, you know what I'm saying? So, but no, man. Hey, Rob, man, um, Give your give give your younger self some feedback and, and encouraging words and give the people that the the young man and the young woman that's watching you now and say, Hey, I wanna hear his courage. I wanna hear something that motivates me. Um it, it doesn't have to be whatever you whatever um, style you wanna put it, just embrace it and, and let and give a quick two, three minute you know, I'm, matter of fact, give us a sermon real quick. Oh, <laughs> let's go. And this is it. This is encouraging to someone. So, um, if if I had to come up with something, I wish you had told me so I could have pre came. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what they say? You always gotta have a sermon in your what? In your heart. <laughs> in my heart. So I'm gonna have, have one in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man. Go ahead, give us a quick um, Yeah. But the floor is yours. I what I will say um, to encourage somebody, um, something that was recently given to me. I, I will, yeah, since you want to call it a sermon, I'll, I'll title, <laughs> I'll title the sermon for people. Um, encouragement to all of us. I'm gonna hit everybody with one thing. I ain't gonna do wow. separate. Say less. That's okay. okay. I'm gonna do. We all in one category today. I will. Encourage everybody by saying no more cycles. Um, that comes from Joshua. If you get a chance, you can read the story about uh, Joshua ending the cycle that the children of Israel went through with Moses. Um, it's because they were in a, a in the wilderness. This, everybody knows about the story where they were wandering for many, many, many years. Uh, that's a cycle. Yeah. And sometimes, and what the reason they got into that cycle was because of their 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 what they were saying out of their mouth and what they were repeating and doing. And so, uh, what I want us to learn and the encouragement that I want to give about everybody today is to break the cycles in your life that is not rendering you getting to your promise. Um, because they were stuck in a place because of the cycle, because of what they were saying, it caused them to go to be on a cycle. And so it wasn't until they finally got out of it 
through the grace of God that uh, someone else led them into the promise. So wow. let's begin to break our cycles. Um, and, and it doesn't even have to be something that's so deep and spiritual, right? If it's just a cycle of, of not being on time, break that. That's a cycle. Right. Number one, it's a very unprofessional cycle because no one is going to really pay attention to anyone that's not on time. Money is on time. People that are wealthy are on time. People that are rich, if you have a business dinner schedule or a business lunch schedule with a millionaire, they're going to arrive early. If you're running late, you're done. They're, mm -hmm. they're not going to fund your business. They're not going to assist right. you. So, so something as simple as being late is a cycle mm -hmm. that many of us need to break. And I and I speak personally. And I know, shout out to my uh, my sister Quantina Swilly because I know she's listening. <laughs> she's texting me, and I know she's listening. But she can attest, and we laugh about this all the time. She tells me all the time, brother, I know God changed you because you was always late everywhere we went. And she's not lying. Like, if we had to be somewhere at seven o'clock, I probably wouldn't get dressed at seven thirty. And then when they call, where you at? I'm on my way. Haven't yeah. even left my house yet. Right. Um, and, and so that became a cycle for me. I got places when I wanted to. Um, and, and, and but as I gained more responsibility in in corporate America yeah. as a manager and I started managing people. Well, how can you tell write them up for being late if you're late? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I had to learn to break the cycle, uh, various cycles, if you will. And so that's what I want to encourage everybody to do today. Let's look at our lives, examine them. In this day and age, we really need, it's no time to play. We really need to grow. We really need to, you know, build foundation. Look what we just went through with this pandemic yeah. that, we, that we've been in, that we're still in, mm -hmm. right? Um, you had to figure out what you can do to survive. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us have cycles of bad, bad employment cycles. We get fired from every job <laughs> we get. Right, no stability. Yeah. So let's let's break these various cycles in our lives that are not yielding good results. Because when you get on the right path or the right road, you'll get to a promise or you'll get to a good result. So that's my encouragement to people. Well, may the Lord watch between me and the while we're absent. <laughs> run from another. <laughs> run from another. Okay. Run from another. <laughs> <laughs> But no, hey, man, look, we actually got to bring you back for part two, man, because I still got so much I want to get pick your brain about it, and, and man, you just you just bless my heart tonight, man. I don't wow, I, wow. for real, man. Again, thanks for saying yes. A lot of people don't understand that, man. When I preach that, man, like when when you hit somebody up and they got a whole other life and you don't, they don't even know you, and they turn around and say yes, I'll come. This man don't know me from Canada Paint. We just met tonight, y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but he came. He came and sat down with me. He let me pick his grain. He let me beat me, and he also became my pastor. In one night. In one night. In one night. In one night. And what we do? The hey, I almost ran. I almost ran into the other studio. <laughs> but, for, but for real though, hey, Robert Rogers, shout out to you, man. I'm actually gonna play your your title, um, cycle breaking cycles. You know the the Jonathan McReynolds on, on our way out. But before we go, and I hope you you come back. Go come back. I will absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, I know you. I know I got church at eight o'clock on uh, when when the building open back up. So I'm gonna try to make it a little bit early for you. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's do that. Let's bring you back and finish what we started because this is a great. Uh, and then you'll be hosting. My, you'll be doing a red carpet experience for my event too. So. Oh, say less. Look at God. What? <sighs> Uh oh, you, hey, you're not coordinated. You're not coordinated. <laughs> I ain't coordinated. You're not coordinated. You're right. Hey, I was finna, y'all. I was finna, I was finna, I was finna shout. Uh, I was finna tell a musician to hit that track. Hold on, I was finna get my musician to hit the track. Y'all think I'm playing? We finna hit this. I'm finna get the dance in real quick. You, you gonna dance with me, pass? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna dance? I'm just playing, y'all. We ain't gonna do that. But no, for, for, uh, again, man. Thanks for coming. Also, let's shout out your um, event real quick before we go. Go ahead. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this interview and enjoyed some of the things we said, you have an opportunity to meet me on May 19th. May 19th, I am hosting a twofold event. So, the event is first for 
business owners, entrepreneurs, people that are aspiring in business, whatever level, even if you just want to know basic business things, this event is the event for you. I am hosting a uh, exclusive business dinner and it just happens to be my 40th birthday as well. So it's an exclusive business dinner. I'm age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm still here. So yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm glad to be coming 40. Like, listen, for real. Like, people not living to be 15 these days. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 40 is, I'm, gl I'm glad about it. But on May 19th, I'm having a, a, an exclusive business dinner and 40th birthday celebration. And so at this event, I wanted to encompass everything. I wanted it to be fun. I wanted it to be a vibe. I wanted it to be a turn up. Yeah. But I also wanted it to be a takeaway for people. I want them to learn, walk away with not just, we turned up and you know, whatever, but I want them to walk away with knowledge and assistance. So I have Mr. Larry Roberts, who is an amazing man in Chicago. He is a blueprint for us business owners, us, sure. us younger business owners. Larry Roberts is literally, he owns barber colleges. He, he's a traveling musician. The man is absolutely amazing. He has his uh, salons and Walmarts. And even in the, wow. he's also in the state prisons uh, teaching uh, the inmates uh, how to uh, sharpen themselves to get trades. So he's coming to speak to all of our business owners that night. Um, then we're gonna we're gonna chill out after the business portion. We're gonna have a few look few questions and answers with him. Um, have him pour out some knowledge on business. Then after that, we're gonna just kind of rock it out. I got a live band coming. Got DJ, some good food. It's gonna be a, a good night. And so that's May nineteenth. It's gonna be held at the Palace Regency. Um, that's going to be at 5600 West Cermak Road okay. in Cicero, the Palace Regency, 5600 West Cermak Road. Uh, doors open at 730. The event starts promptly at 8 p.m. And um, tickets are $40. Tickets are $40. Um, so jump online because I am selling the tickets really fast, guys. So it's going to be like $40. Yeah, it's $40. <laughs> Listen, I don't think you're going to go anywhere and get all that. $40. For $40. Like, it's definitely, that's definitely a, a good ticket price, right? <laughs> and you can get that ticket by logging onto my website, which is www.rx, like x-ray, c-e-l-l-e-n-c-e dot -E -E biz. That's www.rexcellence.biz and that's where you'll grab the tickets at. And that's where you can find his bio and find everything he got going on. Hey y'all, it's one of them shows tonight. Shout out to my boy Raj, my pastor Raj. <laughs> what a fellowship. What a joy to buy. Leaning on that. I don't know the rest of it. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't even going. I ain't going to stop it. He well, words. My, my pastor finished it. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. okay. For real, y'all. Hey, man, look. I found, I found okay. me a new pastor. I ain't had no pastor, so I'm like, man, I need to find me a pastor, man. I'm, you know what I'm saying? So you my pastor, all right? I got you. So when I see you in the street, I'll be like, pastor. So what's up? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so why not get on over after tonight, man? You know what I'm saying? I'm be like, hey. You're the preacher, but I'm just playing. <laughs> but no, um, again, thanks again. Um, I, I play too much. That's one thing I do. I play too much. <laughs> I'm the cool man. Yeah. Listen, I like fun. Yeah, I, so, it's cool to be laid back. Yeah. So I'm good. So and, and thanks again. I wanna um, shout out to your church, Powerhouse International Ministries. Shout out to uh, Pastor Rockamore and. Keep keep doing your thing. I'm gonna bring you back probably next month, um, if you can. Um, if I want to get you right before the event too. So what we'll do is we'll bring you back right before the event, and then that way we can pump the people up some more. You know what I'm saying? So uh, let's have a good time. Let's let's go on. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all again. Again, y'all can find him at where? You can find me at. You can find me on Facebook. Obviously at Robert Rogers. That's Robert R O B R T. And Rogers, R O G E R S, no D, no, no D at all. No D. <laughs> um, and you can find me uh, at www.rexcellence.biz. It gets bumpy. So let's break them cycles. <laughs>